Good afternoon, guys. Serpent here from the JHA Group, Joint Helicopter Operations Group. I've got a couple new members that uh, recently got the Harrier. Um, so instead of trying to coordinate with uh, everybody to do some training, I figured I'd make a video on what I do for the cold start. Um, at least what I do anyway, and it works for me, so hey, there you go. Take it for, take it for what you got, and uh, we'll, we'll get this thing started and get it off the deck here. Um, in the cold and dark, first thing I typically do is get rid of the stick, um, just so you can see things a little better. Um, step one for me is always have the uh, crew remove the wheel chocks. Remove the wheel chocks. Copy. Wheel chocks are now removed. There you go. And your parking brake is already set at default, which is this little lever right here. Um, first thing I do, come back around the back side here. I'll try to zoom in so you can see what I'm actually clicking on. I did it turn on the cursor recording so you can actually see that now. So DCS on, DES, DECS is on, sorry. Um, fuel shutoff is on, oxygen to on. And then before I turn on the fuel pumps, I will typically go over here and turn on the battery. Um, and then I will sh turn on all of the light gauges. Um, that way once we do have power, it's all functioning. And this will also turn the radios on at this point as well. So if you need to make contact with uh, anybody on SRS, this is how you do it. I do typically tend to fly, even during the day, with uh, instrument lights on a little bit because sometimes things get blocked by the light and it just makes it easier to see. Um, so now, once we get that, I can go to engine. I put the engine settings there. Uh, we won't do anything else until we get power on. Uh, but what I will do before I go and start things up, I will go ahead and turn on the flap switch. Um, otherwise, you'll hear a big warning saying, hey, flaps. Uh, then you want to ensure that the anti-skid is on nose wheel steering. Uh, that way you at least can steer from taxi. Uh, from here, fuel pumps are on. You go over to main, the engine start forward and come up to watch the engine. RPMs will climb up to 92. Once it's stable at 92, you can bump the throttle forward and that will continue the rest of the way up to idle. And there's no buttons for this, you just move the throttle just enough to get it to, uh, to do that. Then that will stabilize and also give you control of the nozzles, which I'd leave at 40. Let's get the HUD turned on down here. That's this little lever right there. So now that your engine idle, um, pretty much ready to go at this point um, for the engine so you can get everything else set up. Uh, we'll go ahead and shut the canopy here so it's a little quieter. Um, in our servers, we don't have anything set up to where you have to do any INS alignment. Um, with, with the Harrier, as long as your special settings are set to do so. So if all you have to do is actually switch over to nav, and then all of a sudden, hey, you have a map. You don't have to wait for this thing to uh, align, which is nice. Uh, it's just a, it's a time saver, really. It, uh, you know, just one extra step we can avoid. Uh, at that point, you know, it's just a matter of setting up waypoints, anything you need for... Uh, Weapons, lighting, if you're in the dark, you can change the uh, position of the lighting, um, and so on. So the way the flaps work on this jet, um, flaps to stole on the very bottom, they will actually follow the nozzles um, up to a point. So that, uh, to their limits within, I should say. Um, and that's usually where you want to start your takeoff from. Uh, your takeoff and landings are usually always going to be in the stole mode. Uh, 
So changing co communications for SRS purposes, you can click on the comms one button, and our common frequency is two five two. Oops, clear um, two decimal zero zero, and enter. And there you go. Now your comms are going to be on that frequency. So you can change anything UHF with that uh, command there. Um, at this point, I can go and this little lever back here is the arming, arming of the uh, ejection handle, which is kind of important. And then RWR to on. We'll go ahead and turn that volume down just for now. Um, and then the uh, countermeasures to auto. But you can do that after takeoff if you want. We don't follow the, the, the handbook here. Uh, this is just the best way I've found to do it, and uh, it works. So one thing that you will notice on here in the stall mode on the HUD is you can hold down the nose wheel steering button, and your nose wheel steering will go to high gain, which is what you'll need sometimes to turn on the boat so you don't run off the deck. Um, even some of the ground taxi areas are pretty snug. Um, so as long as the nose wheel steering switch is on, you will have that option. Um, I think by the book you, you should be taking off with it off, um, but I've never found that to be useful except for on landings on occasion. That way if you land a little bit sideways, the castering main gear underneath your seat here is able to uh, kind of float around a little bit so you don't tip the thing over. Um, so now we are going to hold the foot brakes because this thing will roll with the parking brake off. And uh, we'll go ahead and disengage the parking brake. Sorry, my zoom is getting a little jittery here. Turn off that master warning. Um, you can set a bingo fuel prior to this if you want. This is just a quick get up and go video, so that's something I often do in the air once I know how much fuel I have when I'm off the boat. Um, setting up nav lights, depending on what you're doing, there is a uh, like brightness is a uh, norm NVGs. It does have IR lights, which is nice. Um, and then your actual light controls are I'm on track IR down here, and you can change those. So there you have it. We'll do a quick roll by view. All right, so let's taxi out here and uh, hop off the boat here. Um, so with the brakes still held, I uh, I typically will actually. Oops, let's get that centered again. And just remember, this thing will start rolling as soon as you let off the brakes, so keep that in mind. And this is only the second time I've lobbed this thing off of the Invincible here, so we'll see how it goes. Um, I've So far, I've only done it the same way I do with the Tarawa. Um, point the velocity vector in the center of the pitch ladder right down the uh, the ramp and kick the brakes here and sometimes if you're really heavy I'll actually uh, use the nozzles to back up to uh, further after the boat that way you can get as much of a run up as you want um, then I'll go to 20% 20, 20 degrees on my uh, nozzles bring up my power which you can see the RPM gauge up there. You want you don't want to exceed 100 um, if you can help it. If you're really heavy, you can turn on the water um, just down here. But typically you don't need it. Bring my power up to 100 here. Once you start to roll, let off the brakes, and off we go. And as soon as you hit the edge of the ramp, you drop in the nozzles to 50. And off we go. That was unavoidable there. I had to do it. Um, typically, I'll start my transition a lot quicker. Any gears up, and the uh, nozzles start rolling back slowly as you gain airspeed. And then you bring your flaps up to cruise mode, which was going to keep them from wiggling around so much. 
Um, and that's you off the boat um, at this point. Sorry about the lag if there's any. You know, next video I might do will be setting up waypoints and uh, how to actually find the boat um, and what I do for landing or practicing off the boat. Um, because there's some really neat things you can do with this, uh, with the tack hand and the course line, so you can see what you're doing. But uh, hopefully this will help folks get uh, get airborne and um, basically the same way I would teach you if we were doing a one-on-one. -on -one. So it's uh, hope you know have fun with it, guys. And uh, this is an awesome module, and it, there's a lot to learn, obviously, but um, it can be very useful in uh, so many different ways, and it, it is an absolute blast to fly. So everybody uh, have a good one, and we'll see you on the next time.